Let's talk about how urinary retention may have a relationship with ADLs and rehabilitation after a stroke. I'll talk about urinary retention in general, some statistics, and what the study found, which is very insightful for occupational therapists who may work with patients after CVA on functional mobility, ADLs, cognition, and other occupations. Hi, my name is Jeff and I am an occupational therapist. I make occupational therapy content on my blog, ot2.com, social media, podcasts, and regularly here on YouTube. If you're interested in learning more about occupational therapy, be sure to subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss a single video. Also, check out my free resources in the description below. Let's get functional. First of all, what is urinary retention? Urinary retention is the inability to voluntarily void urine. It can be caused by many acute and chronic conditions, including diabetes, infection, trauma, and neurological conditions. Some drug side effects may increase the likelihood of urinary retention as well. Many stroke survivors experience urinary retention. Among the many issues with urinary retention is UTI. It can also lead to embarrassment, anxiety, depression, and other psychosocial factors. Oftentimes, patients with stroke experience other cognitive deficits and may be unaware of their urinary retention. This can lead to their bladders be to become distended and complications such as UTI. How health professionals may notice this is often such as with nurses or doctors. Nurses frequently inquire and document voiding for urine. They may notice a high PVR or post-void residual in patients with urinary retention. PVR is the amount of urine retained in the bladder after a voluntary void. This can be detected with something like a bladder scanner by nurses. Just how prevalent is urinary retention? In the study conducted in 2000, 80 adults undergoing inpatient rehabilitation after a first ischemic stroke found that 23 had evidence of urinary retention on admission, but only 4 still did by the time at discharge. Many patients become frustrated when they realize that their high PVRs and urinary retention need to be resolved by nursing using, say, urinary catheters, often every so and so hours as directed by a doctor. This may lead to UTIs as well. Patients that have chronic urinary retention may opt to have a suprapubic catheter placed. This is a relatively simple surgical intervention in which a tube that is used to drain urine from the bladder is inserted into the bladder through a cut in the abdomen, a few inches below the navel. This is done under a local anesthetic or a light general anesthetic. Many patients can actually participate in therapy after the effects wear off without requiring extended bed rest. I wanted to go over some interesting findings of a 2017 study of patients who have had a stroke who received extensive rehabilitation. They compared 25 patients with urinary retention to 69 without. In terms of diagnosis, there was a variety of right, left, and bilateral CVA. More in the group had ischemic strokes than hemorrhagic. The measures they used were mini mental for cognition, Berg balance scale for balance and fall risk, the functional ambulation category, the fugal mire, and the Barthel index. So what did they find? The bottom line was that in the urinary retention group, they had significantly worse scores across the board in MMSE, Berg, FAC, fugal mire, and Barthel index. Of course, correlation is not causation. So Urinary retention does not cause poor cognition, balance, ADLs, and overall function, but this study shows that there is a relationship in patients with urinary retention compared to those without. Perhaps this may be due to underlying reasons with the central nervous system in the brain being damaged, causing the complex phenomenon of urinary retention. So naturally, other complex functions such as cognition, balance, and ADLs are affected. What you may infer from working with patients is that those with urinary retention, at least during the acute period after CVA, will likely have worse performance. So this may influence how you approach discharge planning in acute care when presented with a patient after CVA with urinary retention versus one who has not had that. Of course, OTs should consider the entire individual holistically and other factors such as culture, baseline, caregivers, current performance, type of CVA, and so on. So, how many of the patients with urinary retention in this study regained urinary function? The good news is that most patients often improve urinary function, 
but some may not within the time that's allowed during rehabilitation or 20 days on average. In the study, recovery of bladder function was quite common with 95% showing recovery of urinary retention, 82 being resolved by discharge, and 13% within two months after discharge. So this study is a reminder of how allied health professionals work together as a team. As such, OTs should work with doctors, nurses, and so on and report their findings including what they found when patients voided or if they were not able to during their sessions because it can be a predictor of function during their rehabilitation stay and what goes on after. 